Hey guys, Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next part of our Java tutorial series. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about primitives which are essential to storing and manipulating data in Java. And I have a wonderful sh uh, sheet here in the description that you can pull up. And this basically shows all the different primitive types and uh, what they store and also their minimum and maximum values. So we'll be going over all of these in a second here, but uh, essentially what a primitive is, is a variable that can store some sort of basic information. And when I say basic information, I mean something like a single character, like the letter A, or an integer like the number 10, or even a fraction like 0.5. These are basic uh, numbers and letters that we can manipulate in our Java program. So let's say you wanna store an integer. Well, first integer that we have here, our first integer type in the category integer is a byte. So a byte is, uh, it has a size of eight bits in your computer. Uh, if you don't know what bits are, I encourage you to research that a little bit more, uh, but it's not fundamental really to understanding Java. Um, but it can store a minimum value of negative 128 and a maximum value of 127. Anything above or below this number will not fit in this box, um, if that's what you would like to call it. I sort of like to use the metaphor of a box when we're talking about these. So uh, let's actually make a byte here. So in your program, in your main class, in your uh, main method here, we can type byte, the name of your byte, in this case, um, num is equal to 10, semicolon. And if we save here, you can see that this is valid because we're creating a byte named num and it's equal to 10. And if we actually system.out.print line and we type num with a semicolon on the end, uh, what this is gonna do is print to the console the value of the variable that you put inside. So if we save and we run with our little green triangle here, you can see in the console that it actually does print 10 because uh, it's printing this variable, which happens to be equal to 10. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated when you need bigger numbers. So let's say we're storing 190. You can see that this is gonna give us an error. And again, that's because if we pull up our sheet here, you can see that byte, uh, again, the maximum value it can store is 127. And that goes same for the minimum value as well. Uh, so what, what do you do if you wanna store a bigger number, like 190? Well, you can move up to a short. So we can actually keep this here at 10. And right below it, we're gonna make a short, short uh, num2 is equal to um, 270, semicolon. And you can see here that this works now. Now we can store a value as big as 270, um, but it has to be a short, and we have to name it something different, of course, uh, because if we name it num, our program is gonna say, hey, you already created a variable named num above, and it's a byte, so what do you want me to do with this new num? Uh, that's basically what the program is saying, so we need to give it a different name, so I put num2 instead. And if we print out num2 instead of num, save and we run, you can see that it is printing out 270. Now a short does also still have a maximum value. And if we pull up our chart here, we can see that its minimum value is negative two to the 15 and its maximum value is two to the 15 and minus one. So if you do get a high enough number, you will have to move to the next one, which is int. And we can just create down here an int num3 is equal to, let's just say 960,000. So you can see we can store this huge number, 960,000 in our integer um, because we're moving basically up. So we can keep going actually even with this, create a long, long num4 is equal to, let's do something crazy. I know that an integer could probably store this value, but just sort of for visual purposes, let's do 870 million. There we go. So, and if we save, you can see that we have all of our number primitives here. And again, the only reason you'd wanna use a byte or a short over something like an int or a long is if you're working with smaller numbers so you can conserve uh, space. Because if we look at our chart here again, you can see that a byte is only a size of eight bits, whereas something like a long is 64 bits. So you're saving a lot of bits by using a byte instead of a long, especially if you're using a number uh, as low as like five. So essentially, if you're writing a program that is using very small numbers, 
you're gonna wanna stick to a byte or a short or an int. Um, but if you're using very big numbers uh, that could overflow these types, then you're gonna wanna use an int or a long. And that's up for you to decide essentially. Now, next on our list here is a, we'll, we'll get to char in a second here because this is a little bit different uh, as it deals with num uh, letters instead of numbers, although it can deal with both. Uh, so let's move to float. So we have this thing called a floating point. What a floating point is, is essentially any number that is a fraction or a decimal. Uh, it's not a whole number, essentially. So let's make a few spaces here. So we've got a float, and let's name this uh, decimal. Decimal is equal to uh, 10.5 semicolon. And we can print this out, decimal. Uh, now you'll get an error here, and that's because whenever you create a float, you're gonna have to add the letter F to the end of the number. And this is saying that this number here is a floating point. Uh, so if you don't add the F to the end, it's not gonna work. And if we save and we run, you can see that it is printing out 10.5. And it's important to note that these floats, while they can hold fractions and decimals, they can also hold whole numbers as well. So if we just put 10 in here and we save and we run, you can see it is printing out 10 still, but it's adding a decimal point to the end uh, just so that you know that it is a, um, a float, a floating point number. Um, and if we look at this chart here, you can see that uh, although it is a very high cap, uh, floats do have a maximum value. So eventually if you're using huge numbers, you will have to move to a double um, and we can put that on here. Double, uh, let's call this fraction is equal to 5,000 semicolon and doubles don't actually require you to use um, you know some people might think oh you add a D to the end just like you would add an F to the end of a float no um, for whatever reason doubles will um, not require you to use a um, any letter at the end um, but we can make this 5000.6789 if we save and let's just control C paste it into our uh, print statement here and run, you can see that it is printing it out to console, you know, as normal. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you create a long like this, uh, you actually have to add an L to the end, just like you do with float, how you add an F to the end of the uh, the number here. You wanna add an L to the end to si uh, signify that this is a long, not a uh, an integer. And you can actually make these capital as well, just so you know that they don't have to be lowercase. And we can save here. Uh, and this will make sure that it, this is actually a long value. Although I believe that this size of number would work fine in integer as well. Uh, but with that, we can move on to our next primitive type, which is the char. And if we open up our chart here, you can see that the char, uh, which is short for character, is also in the in integer category. And I'll explain why in a second. But um, you know, given that the name is char, uh, you would expect it will hold a, a single character within the alphabet. So something like A or B or C, those are all single characters. It will not be able to hold a full string, of course. So if we actually go to our IDE here and we type char, and we can name this character if we want. Uh, this is equal to, and we have two single quotation marks. And in here, we can just sort of type a, uh, a letter. So A, uh, we can add a semicolon to the end here. And we can see that this is valid. Uh, it could be lowercase a, um, you could put z. But if we were to, for example, put multiple characters, so let's say we put a, b, c, you can see we get an error here because um, this is an invalid character constant. It only wants one character because it's a char. So we have to put a in here. Um, but you can also put uh, number characters. So you could put something like nine. Oh, I wrote an, uh, an eight, a nine. You could put. 10, uh, but it has to be, um, sorry, one character still. So it could be one, you couldn't put 10, but you could put nine, uh, eight, seven, all those numbers, uh, as long as it's one single character. And another thing that we can do is we can actually get rid of these quotation marks and we can actually put a number, like uh, let's put 65. So you might be wondering, well, why is 65 um, able to be assigned to a char if this is supposed to be characters in the alphabet? Well, if we open up our browser here again, um, I have this ASCII table here, I believe is how you pronounce it. And this is essentially a chart that converts all um, letters and numbers and characters in um, the English keyboard into a number. 
Um, and you can convert back and forth between these uh, in Java using a method that we'll talk about way later on. But if you look here, you can see that the letter, the capital letter A right here, I know it's very small, is assigned to the number 65. So what we're doing here when we uh, set this char uh, named character to 65 is we're really setting it to the letter A, the capital letter A, uh, because this ASCII value, as you can see, goes to 65. So if we were to put um, 66 in here and open up our ASCII chart, you can see that this is now a B, a capital letter B. And you can see capitals and lower cases have different numbers, but um, that is just to show you that you can actually um, use numbers for char. And we can actually see this in action uh, by deleting this fraction here and typing character. And if we print out this char value that we have here, get rid of this notation. Uh, remember it's 66, so this is um, assigned to a capital letter B. And we save and we run. You can see that our program actually writes out the letter B here. Uh, so that just shows you that it's not printing out the number, it's printing out the character, the ASCII character that is assigned with this number. So finally, we can move on to our final primitive type, which is called a Boolean. And if we open up our chart here, we can see that Boolean is in the other category. And a Boolean, rather than holding a character or a number, is a question or a statement that can be set either false or true. It's a proposition, essentially. And if we actually close out of this, we can make one here. Uh, by typing boolean again making sure we're setting the type as boolean then naming it whatever we'd like uh, generally you want to name booleans as a question so i'm going to type is happy and this is equal to either true or false so in this case i'm going to say false and uh, if we were to type is happy into our print statement is happy and we were to save and run you can see that we are printing out false. So it's not printing out the question, it's printing out the whether or not it's true or false. And if we were to change this to true and save again and run, you can see that it is true now. And of course, this means that you can't set this to a number, you can't set it to you know, a character, none of that will work, it has to be either true or false. There we go, and we can save. And that is about it for Java primitives, at least for the introduction. Um, in the next episode, we'll be talking about how to actually manipulate these and change them in more advanced programs. But this is how you store them and how you print them out to your console. And of course, I would encourage you to go into your IDE and mess around with these because that's the best way. You're really gonna learn what works and what doesn't. Um, but you will have to memorize these if you wanna write really advanced Java programs, of course. So uh, thanks guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode.